Hey everybody, final thoughts time for The Hunger, and uh, yeah, this works great. Designer Richard Garfield, well, he's had a couple of hits on his hands in the past. I don't know, maybe you've heard of Magic the Gathering, maybe you've heard of King of Tokyo, maybe you've heard of Bunny Kingdom, Robo Rally. Uh, I think The Hunger is definitely uh, poised to join the pantheon of really largely well-loved and well-respected designs from, uh, you know, the master of design, maybe arguably the most consequential board game designer in history, certainly one of them uh, because of Magic the Gathering. And yeah, this is a sharp, sharp, fun, little, fast-playing deck builder race against the clock. Push your luck. Um, the presentation is phenomenal. The art is amazing. The theme really comes to life. There is uh, a really lovely, macabre sense of humor to the goings-on. On, um, which uh, might be a turnoff for some people, I suppose, but I, I certainly enjoyed uh, getting into the role here and dealing with the indigestion from spicy villagers that I had previously fed upon, and now I got to make a run for the well. I mean, all this fun, silly uh, stuff. But at the heart of it, uh, the thing that's driving it is how far am I going to go before I turn around and get back home knowing that uh, I'm racing against the clock? And now, I can't really go any farther without talking about Clank, obviously. Because Clank is famously a deck building game all about going further and further into, well, a cave or a dungeon instead of the wilderness. Um, you know, getting as many points as you can and then getting out before you get eaten, or not burned up by the sun, but eaten by a dragon. And uh, so on the surface, these two games have so much in common. Um, and so some people might say, oh, this is a Clank ripoff. I don't think you, anybody can actually make that argument, though. Because this is from publisher Renegade. Renegade also publishes Clank. Um, so, if anything, they're ripping off from themselves. But the, first of all, let me just say, if you are a Clank fan, I imagine you will very much enjoy this game. You could think of this as, you know, Vampire Clank if you want. Um, because, you know, the raw bones are there. But boy, this game... It's almost more different than the same. There are so many things that this does differently. One, and this I think would be a welcome uh, change from regular Clank rules that people will really appreciate, there is a fixed amount of time you have. This is not a game where one person can just kind of bum rush, get a treasure, and then rush right back out really quick, and then leave everybody else um, you know, having to struggle against the constantly increasing threat level. Me, personally, I think that works great in Clank. That is not a guaranteed path to victory. That's almost a guaranteed way to lose, quite frankly. People have a really... A lot of folks out there really misunderstand Clank. They think if somebody does that, um, you know, they've ruined the game for everybody. All they've done is just... they pretty much just taken themselves out of the running for winning. Because you can survive for a long time in Clank. But there's a lot of uncertainty in Clank. Back to Hunger, there's no uncertainty. You know you have exactly 15 rounds. And you know in the first heart of the game, you can go fast. I um, mean, you can go deep. But the more villagers you feast upon, the more they are going to slow you down. And that's a very, very big change from the feel of Clank. I mean, almost all the villagers really slow you down. And thinning them out is very, very tough. So you have to be careful. This game is much more harsh and unforgiving. At 15, if you have not made it back to the mountain, or if you're playing in the hardcore mode, back to the graveyard, you're dead. There's no, oh, well, I kind of crossed the line, so maybe I just didn't get any... No, you're dead. You're just dead. And um, it, it is very easy to time to run away. Um, and if you do too much feeding at the beginning of the game and no calling, you will find, oh my gosh, I've only got three rounds to get out. Oh, how am I going to make it? And then, oh, there's a hand of nothing but humans. I don't move at all. There's another hand of mostly humans. Okay, okay. I, I think that's most all the villagers. Hopefully I'll get some speed and I'll be able to make it across the finish line. So you get that real tension. And this game, on the whole, if I was going to say one thing that separates it from Clank, this, I would say, is a heavier game. This has more hidden depth to it. It requires really... Um, finessed gameplay because there's so much more because it's so harsh and unforgiving. Another big change too is drawing three cards every turn. Unlike Clank and almost every other deck builder in the universe where you draw five cards every turn and do what you can, here you only draw three unless you've got powers that let you draw more. I mean, you, you see that kind of stuff. That's a really big change because it can up the luck factor. If you're only drawing three cards, it's much more likely if you have really stuffed your deck full of fat, uh, juicy villagers, it is much more likely that you'll get a hand of no movement at all. That you'll end up getting dead turns. That will happen to you. 
Um, now, hopefully, you have put enough stuff in the deck that, oh, even if I can't move at all or I can't hunt, I can at least do something with some of the powers because, I mean, there are a lot of really interesting powers. But it's such an interesting thing. Um, you know, as the villagers get sleepier and sleepier, they get easier to catch. And you might think, oh, one speed, yeah, I'll grab all these villagers. That's great. That's a lot of points. But you won't score them if you don't make it back to the castle before the sun rises. So you really have to balance that. I think it works great. Um, and like I said, for folks who are really passionately anti-clank because of the, the variable length of game, this fixed length of game, well, you have no one to blame but yourself. If you got too greedy and went too far and you had too full a belly of uh, villager blood, you know, maybe you deserve to fry. Um, you know, and that's on you. And you, uh, because, I mean, you might blame the game, but really, the game does give you the tools to be able to navigate this much smaller hand size. Um, so you really do have to pay attention to that. And it can really sneak up on you if you're not playing your A game. So I would say, on the whole, Clank, uh, you know, certainly base Clank, but probably even Clank in space, uh, are a much more forgiving game. Even with the variable turn structure, uh, it's it's a bit more lighthearted. This game requ requires more of you. So this is kind of like a next step from Clank. So if you're a Clank aficionado and you love it, and you want a very different challenge, if you want um you know uh, you know count count Clank basically, you de it definitely owe it to yourself to check this out. Uh, it works really lovely, um, and I mean hopefully it has as bright a future as Clank and gets lots of expansions and all that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's going to be about it, folks. That was the run through for the hunger. Thanks so much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye bye.